Good afternoon, everyone. From the Great Lakes of California, record low temperatures and snow blankets the west. That purple blob over Texas is 35 degrees Fahrenheit below normal temperatures. Just a few days back, snow warnings for eight states, Rockies bracing record cold temperatures, feet of snow. So much, in fact, that they're not used to even tracking snow totals like this until November. If we look at the North American snow totals, that red line, that's us this year. So what do you think is going to happen to the global temperatures because of all this record cold in the U.S.? And oh yeah, the lower 48 was what was the warmest across the planet, keeping the temperatures at 0.14 degree above baseline. Reports coming in from Mongolia about the crops and the early snows, the record cold there. Also record snows early across Pakistan. Expecting to head into lower solar activity, this is the result. It's going to amplify from this point on in forward. And also Weatherbell putting out the winter 2018-19 forecast. The intensification of the grand solar minimum and it's truly in play. These are some items I'm looking at getting myself. So I'm starting to list what I'm looking at. Long-term food storage, the Amazon influencer page here, amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash adapt 2030 reading list as well to help you get started to understand the grand solar minimum as well as long-term food storage and emergency food kits with my patriot supply the links to those are below in the description box as well as links to many ice age conversations episode number 122 posing the question do you think the governments of our planet are going to tell us about this cool and the crop losses that are coming or do you think they're just going to keep silent and the reasons why they would do so Starting off here with a couple nice temperature charts. From the Great Lakes to California, record low temperatures and snow blanket the west. And Ryan Maui even states it as daily low temperature records being smashed in the western half of the U.S. Just yesterday, all those blue and green dots in the left chart there, those are all record lows. And taking a look at the temperature gradient map on the right there. But first, see that purple blob over Texas? That is 35 degrees Fahrenheit below normal temperatures. It extends down into Texas as well. It doesn't just stop at the border. And this is the temperature map here for the daily highs, 2 p.m. Was on the 15th, but when we move into the high temperatures on the 16th, you can definitely see a difference. So wherever you see that white or the dark blue or the purple, those are below normal temperatures. Where that striation of yellow is, that's normal temperatures. And when we get to the right, when we get into those darker reds, that's where the above normal temperatures are. So you can see the U.S. has cooled significantly along with Canada, parts of Mexico. And another glimpse in here, high temperatures, 30 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit below normal. Texas quite chilly, top line. Dallas would set record low highs of 57 degrees Fahrenheit. Remember, it's in the 1970s and 1913. There's so many calls for a repeating winter of the 1970s. Remember, Buffalo was buried. Expect another city somewhere in the Northern Hemisphere to be buried and require assistance from the military to bring in supplies to the stranded citizens. And with all these cold temperatures across North America... You have to wonder what's going to happen with the global temperatures as we move through October. Keep in mind, September was only 0.14, just barely over one-tenth of a degree above the 30-year average. So when you think about that, add into it the continental U.S., which I circled in that orange box, was that part of the world that was keeping these temperatures warmer from going back to the baseline or even slipping below. Expect a drop in temperature when it comes to the October numbers, back down to baseline or below. And the IPCC, you're going to have to start explaining about low solar activity equates to heavier snowfalls and colder temperatures on our planet, not carbon dioxide. And when you start to see these records being broken back into the 1800s, the butterfly diagram here, where are the sunspots on the sun? How many sunspots are there? You can see the activity is starting to match up with something back in the 1880s. 
Solar physicists are talking about gargantuan changes in our weather systems, magnetosphere is weakening, jet streams are going out of flow, yet the IPCC still does not want to discuss solar influences on our planet and what the effects are on our crop yields. They're still pushing the narrative of it's CO2 changing everything. All the while your food prices are rising and nobody's talking in earnest about mitigation techniques or how to try to solve these problems that we're entering head on into at about 90 miles an hour. Now Weatherbell putting out the December 2018 to February 2019 forecast. These are some of the brightest minds on the planet putting this information out here. So we'll have to see, is it going to warm up? Because the October temperatures seem to have cooled drastically. Now it could invert and then we could get a flip and December could be warmer than October. But you have to think, if this grand solar minimum is coming faster than even the brightest minds and weather forecasters on our planet are putting it together, we have a serious problem. And also we'll dive right in here taking a look at the snowfall total forecast for winter 2018-19. Remember, we're only in October. We're still in autumn. We're not even in the winter yet. And we're having exceptional snowfalls. So we'll see how it pans out. You know, it could taper off through the rest of the year and this will be right on the money. Don't know yet. It is a forecast. And on to what's happened in this anomalous event over the last week. Winter came early this year. Snow warnings issued for eight states across the Rockies. Record cold temperatures, feet of snow. These are some images. Shouldn't be snowing that much. Not even until November. These snow depth totals that we're seeing right now, they're not even looking for these types of totals to measure at least until November. And October 15th, it pegged off at the 15-year database measurements with national snow analysis. Now Sod.net had a really good article here. North America snow covers the most it's been in mid-October in 13 years and then there's even more snow and that's why it pegged on the 15 year mark but a day prior it was a 13 year mark. The day after it was a 15 year high total. Notice where we are. That red line, I'm going to wide that out for you so you can see it, is where we are 2018-19. Well above anything that's on that chart back to 2005 and 6. Al Gore told us snow would be a thing of the past and your children would never know what snow is and here we are 15 year snow totals being eclipsed in North America. And then we can wide it out here to the full northern hemisphere totals running right in the center there not low not high but right in the center again we were told snow would be a thing of the past. And a blizzard is on the way forecast for this nor'easter rolling up the east coast of the U.S. A blizzard forecast for Thanksgiving over the New England states. Looking at New York City picking up five inches during that time. It's going to be a snowy football afternoon for many of you. And keep those turkeys warm because you're going to need it. It's record cold and snow heading your way. Now speaking of other locales I'm getting some reports of here in Mongolia. Had a couple send me in some first-hand accounts of what's happening up there. They're near Darkhan, and they're dairy farmers. So they're in tune with what's going on in the climatic conditions. So just as an indication for you, September 19th and 20th, I'm going to take you back just about three weeks. We're talking about heavy snowfalls right in the middle of the wheat harvest. I received another message after I pinged them back and said I'm going to use your information in my video. They wrote back and said the wheat is only 30% harvested. There is so much stranded out in the fields right now that there's going to be lost what they haven't harvested so far. They continue on. Normally they don't get snow until October and even then it's not so bad. But this is at least a full month early on the snow totals. Very deep, wet, sticky snow. And we see that again when we get these early season snowfalls or the late season snowfalls. Flatten the wheat and they don't even expect them to salvage it out of the fields. Thousands, thousands of acres of wheat lost. Bottom paragraph. Talking about the temperatures, minus 8 degrees Celsius, got to realize 0 degrees Celsius is freezing. So we're going down into the high teens, maybe low 20s Fahrenheit there. Ridiculous for this time of the year. Leaves are still on the trees and they're getting those cold temperatures. Over to Pakistan, you see that same heavy wet snow again. This is record breaking snow for Pakistan this early in the season. Just like we saw in India. Record snow in Nepal and record snow in Himachal Pradesh. And here we go, Pakistan. This is how deep it is. They don't expect this at least until the end of November. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. 
signs are all around us, things are changing, and you have to really ask yourself, will the governments of the world start telling people truly what's going on with the crop losses, the effects from our sun, or are they going to try to avoid a global panic? Because you know how people are these days. There's 7.5 billion people that'll be scraping and racing for resources once the cat's out of the bag. I'm hoping to give you a little bit of information to get a head start. You need to start preparing right now.